Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Thank you for tuning to In-Depth. Today we're going to talk about John 5, 8. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Let's take it from the start. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. I can picture St. Paul loving the scripture and preaching it to all the Jews. As you know, he was sent by God to preach to the Gentiles, but he wanted to preach to the Jews just because he knew the Old Testament. And this, as we will see, will show the weakness of the law in the Old Testament. So the five portraits in it symbolize the five books of the Old Testament that Moses wrote. All the, the law, the commandments, everything in it. But look at what it had. It had a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, and paralyzed. Because the book didn't save. It only gave commandments not to do certain things. And it was through the manifestation of the law that sin became aware to the people. So it actually brought sin in as well. That's why when Jesus came, he said he came to fulfill the law, not to destroy it. He made it perfect. Now, this translation said an angel went down at a certain time. It wasn't a certain time. Um, the more accurate translation is he just came down every once in a while. No one knew when the angel was coming down. It, was, it wasn't marked at a certain time or they didn't know what time or day or when. They didn't know. It just, he just came whenever. And they were waiting for the stirring of the water. We know that in the Old Testament, whenever somebody was sick or was unclean or whatever, they used to wash with water. So water here resembles their cleansing. Okay? But now, through the perfection of the law, through Jesus Christ, we're not saved by that, we're saved by grace. Let's continue on reading. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming in, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. So you know that the man was there for 38 years. Let's give him some credit. Um, if I'm praying for something or I want something you know, to happen, I pray for a day or two max, and then I either forget to continue praying, or I just lose hope, and that's it. And this man was there for 38 years. I don't even know how long that is. Um, but let's, let's give him credit for his patience. Everybody adapts, though. Everybody adapts to the circumstance that they're in. And this man could have just accepted the fact and just stayed in, in the pool in hope for one day. It might happen that an angel will come and, and, and he'll, um, he'll move in first. Now, the question that God asked, that Jesus asked, seems a little illogical. He said, do you want to be made well? I mean, if I was there, I would have, you know, just looked around. Like, there are a lot of sick people here. Everybody wants to be made well. But he spoke to this man in particular. The scripture doesn't say that he didn't speak to anyone else. But this is what we're, we're discussing for today. The man's mindset was in the Old Testament, where he didn't say, yes, I want to be made well. He just said, well, the, mo the water is moved by an angel and there's no one to put me in so his answer 
is, yes, but I can't jump in the water. So he, he still relied on the fact that water can clean, but that's not what Jesus taught us, and that's what he didn't want him to think. He wanted him to you know, let his mind free and, and believe in the grace of God. And he gave him just that. The man didn't even answer and say, yes, I want to be healed. But however, Jesus told him, he, he showed him that grace, and he said, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Now, going back to how the angel came down. He just moved the water and whomever was in first was made well. I'm a soccer fan, okay? And it, it doesn't happen frequently, but it does happen where one team is trying to score and, and it's counted as a goal when, when the ball crosses the white line of, of the net. And sometimes the ball would cross in but it would bounce back out depending on how it was shot. And I know it sounds weird but if it hits the post at an angle sometimes it does that. And you will have if it happens you'll have those who are trying to score you know, fight with the referee, it went in and the referee, depending on what he saw either say yes or no. I can see this happening here. That there was no peace in this porch because I may think that I jumped in first but it wasn't actually me, it was somebody else. So even these people were there knowing that an angel came down from heaven. So they know that it's a gift from God, but they still could have rebelled against Him and denied that salvation. Ephesians 2 verse 8 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God and that's the gift that this man got now I want you to picture something with me I'm gonna read something from Acts chapter 3 so Saint Peter and Saint John were walking inside the temple and there was a man begging outside who didn't have use of his legs um, so he was he was begging and then Saint Peter looked at him and said the following silver and gold I do not have but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So it's the exact same thing that happened with this man. So he, leaping up, he jumped up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. So this is someone who sees the gift of God it is how amazing it is and starts praising God. And as, he's, as he walked in the temple, everyone saw him and they were amazed. Right here. All the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging outside at the beautiful gate of the temple. Then they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. So he himself made the difference how... He was before, and now that he has strength, he jumped up and he continued walking. Look at what happens, though. So, the man was healed on a Sabbath. The man at the pool was healed on a Sabbath. The Jews, therefore, said to him, who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them in two parts. He who, he who made me well said to me, Take up your, your bed and walk. And they answered him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Like, it, it, it seems odd that you see a miracle happen and you don't ask questions about, Well, what was wrong with you? How long were you sick? How did the miracle happen? No, all that they focused on is the law. It is not lawful for you that you carry your bed. And this is not only in the Old Testament. Sometimes we too hold on to specific laws, n forgetting that it is grace that saves us and not any of our acts. It is the gift of God when we find favor in His sight, and I pray that we all proceed prosperously in His sight, receive favor, and find that grace. Thank you for listening. I'm Andy. I'll see you next time.